Hey guys, it's Tuesday, um, December 6th, and today's going to be a Navy SEALs day, 20 minutes. <coughs> um, a couple of different thoughts playing around in my head. I'm near the end of this cycle. Today might actually be the end. We'll see how it goes. Um, according to uh, the plan that I hold on to loosely, um, I should be able to do, or I should do, six minutes at six reps a minute. That's what I topped out at last cycle. And then for the remaining four minutes, um, I bumped it back up at six reps a minute to get my best of 110 reps. Um, so today, depending on how I feel, I'm gonna hold it for six and maybe extend it by one more minute. Um, so that brings me to seven. I, all depends on how I feel. That, if that's the only thing that happens, if I get seven and I manage to hold on for five towards the end, so 107 reps, whatever I get my last one or two minutes, um, it's just a bonus. If that's the only thing that happens, then it's a success. It's one up. If I only get six reps or six minutes in, you know, my next cycle, or not my next cycle, my next session, I'll shoot again and try for seven. Um, and then the same thing. If that's the only thing that happens, good. Now, if I can make it to seven, hold on for the fives, I'm going to see what I can do for my last few minutes. Um, if somehow I managed to make it, uh, and I got five minutes left, I might try to hold on for an extra minute, five minutes finished in six reps a minute. I don't know. I'm speculating right now. Speculating might be another word for stalling. Regardless, I'm about ready to do my set. I'm wearing my Conestoga 10 mile shirt. Conestoga is a uh, 10 mile race build arguably as the toughest 10 miles east of the Mississippi. Um, it's in Pennsylvania and it is a rugged, rugged race. 10 miles straight up, and then um, across a rock platform overlooking the Susquehanna River. Um, it is really the beginning climb is hand over hand. Again, it's almost straight up, and uh, usually it's muddy. It's a tough, tough race. They stopped having it for a couple years, but I think it's back on. I might have to redo it sometime. Let's hit that go button and get right into it. I got 50 seconds. <coughs> I'm not going to think about the possibility of a PR until that possibility becomes a little more concrete. My goal, six minutes, six reps a minute. I get that, I go for an extra minute. Then it's just about holding on. seconds. But not my game face. Here we go. Six. One. 
two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Oof. <sighs> 
Bueno.
Probably should have waited. Not gotten that six reps at five minutes in. I knew I was pushing it. Holding fives was a little difficult. I was just moving slower. <coughs> a little less rest at the end of each minute, at the bottom of each minute. <coughs> but I need reps. I could have started um, a rep in that last minute, but I had four seconds. I'm not even sure if I would have been moving up. I probably would have been starting my last push-up when the buzzer went off. So I opted out. Some days I opted, some days I opted out. No telling why. second guess over and done I'd like to do some dips today as this will be my last day for this cycle I'm gonna start over again for oops, um, Navy seals start over again tomorrow <coughs> or uh, Wednesday. Nope. Sorry. Thursday will be my next Navy SEAL session. I'll get it right if I just keep naming days of the week. Um, and I'll probably start over again, five reps a minute, work my way up. So review on the cycle in my head right now. Yes. <coughs> the last two cycles. I tied my best at six counts, and I um, got two less on my Navy SEALs. However, both of them felt somewhat easier. Um, <coughs> I accomplished both, let's say, with less effort. Most especially with the six counts, um, I've got I got more at my chosen rep per minute pace than I did in previous cycles. Um, so I'm happy with all of that. I'm also happy. Again, I'm not gearing up for a big performance every single um, workout. That's mentally and emotionally exhausting, and in my opinion, unsustainable. And I did it for close to a year. Um, 
out of sheer stubbornness, actually. But it doesn't have to be that way. <coughs> Just get those sessions in. Build on them. Little at a time. Just keep working on that layer, that underlying foundation. That's what counts. All right. I'm going to match my dips and pull-ups. And the pull-ups today is going to be 6-6. Six, six. Five, four, three. Maybe squats. Nice and easy, just like five reps. Um, in between, to give myself an additional break. No big deal. Huh? So, six, six. Well, you know what? Let's match our squats with everything else. So, six, six, six. Two times through. All right, let's just get it done. Another round of sixes. It'll take at least a minute between rounds. A little longer. in those, especially those Navy SEALs. Some days you have it at the end and you feel like you can just take it up. Almost match what you did at the beginning. And some days you just don't. <coughs> I suspect it would have gotten two minutes at six had I not um, did it for a minute five or a minute fifteen. Did not work out in my favor. But you know what? You try. It was an impulse decision. Six rounds. Nice upper body pump after the Navy SEALs. So I have five, 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 and five.
So my uh, bell palsy is considerably better the past few days. It started um, <coughs> with getting better function and mobility with my mouth. Eating became easier. I could do an almost full smile. Brushing my teeth, flossing was much easier. Um, drinking and talking, of course. But my eye was lagging behind. Um, but in the past few days, uh, the eye is loosening up as well. I'm able to wink. Um, not 100%. Vision is still a little blurry. Um, for some reason, if I close both eyes, I can open my left, which is the uh, eye with the bell palsy. Um, but I couldn't open my right while keeping my left down. Just an odd thing. Um, but now, I seem to be able to do so. Five reps, round three. Three rounds in. One more round. Um, four pull-ups, four dips, four squats. Right into, back into three pull-ups. Maybe just a brief, brief pause um, before I do it. Only three, only three rounds that include, four rounds that include the uh, dips. I don't want to throw too many in too soon. I'm slowly working them in twice a week. One with a little volume of doing something like this, reverse ladder. Um, and the other one is just a finisher, as many reps as I can pop out. Um, within limits. All right, four reps. Brief pause, <coughs> maybe 30 seconds. Three pull-ups, and I'm done. some extra burpees, but since I'll be starting over, it's time to add on, you know, 
the safest as it is. Finish happy and with a smile. So, speaking of happy and with a smile, this morning I wrote about joy. Deep joy, deep quiet, and deep joy. For me, the two aren't, for all of us, I would say, they're not mutually exclusive. That in deep silence, we find our underlying joy, our natural expression. Um, let's call it the easiness of being. Because in that deep silence, everything is done. That's the Tao. That's the silence of the Tao. Everything is done. Everything happens. There's no place where a door resides. Um, that is where we, we effortless action takes place. Um, when I say non-door, that doesn't mean that it's not the appearance of a door. Um, that means that everything is moved through us, as us, as our expression. Um, that we are just simply part of it. We're part of the Tao. We're a natural expression, expression arising in the Tao. So that's deep silence. And it's always present, ever present. We just don't always notice it. That's the, the nature and the gift of deep quiet is it's an all-allowing presence. It is the all-allowing presence. That's, we could say it's the same as unconditional love. That means that it allows all sounds. It allows all conditions. Unconditional love doesn't mean that conditions don't really exist. It means that they're not distinguished within the nature of love. Deep silence, unconditional silence, is the same. Doesn't mean sounds don't exist. Doesn't mean noises don't come and go. It means that in that deep quiet, all sounds are loud, all sounds are expressed, all sounds are held as a natural arising without distinctions. Um, for me, I notice that most deeply during meditation and self inquiry. <coughs> there is often a debate on. Is meditation the cause of awakening? Does meditation cause awakening? Can it cause awakening? <clears throat> I don't care. Um, I don't meditate to cause anything. I meditate simply because there is a desire to sit silently, to follow my mantra, to let go of my mantra, to vibrate as my mantra, and just let life exist as it is. Um, meditation calls me in the morning. It calls me again late in the afternoon bookends to my day that I deeply, deeply enjoy, that I absolutely love. Not for any reason. Now, there's all kinds of benefits, health benefits, emotional benefits, psychological benefits, spiritual benefits to meditating. <clears throat> I don't have to name a single one of them um, because none of them are the reason why I meditate. They are just happy benefit, happy symptoms that come from my meditation practice. I meditate simply because there is a strong desire to sit, a strong urge to sit silently, quietly, and to allow my mantra to play through my head, to play through my being, to play through my existence. That's it. That's why I meditate. Self-inquiry is a spontaneous thing for me, um, that I notice my own participation in the universe, my own participation in nature, and that this participation is seamless. It's not a separate existence that is participating with another separate existence. It's not two things that are butting heads or interacting or anything like that. It's two things that are really one thing that are playful in existence, that are going back and forth, that are, um, uh, it's the same as, we can think of it as particles playing to form an atom. That's why self-inquiry happens because it simply does. It's just a moment that comes up when I 
notice. And all of a sudden, the noticer himself, the appearance of me, disappears within the noticing. And there's just what is. In the best of times, that happens during burpees. That there isn't me applying effort to do a rep. It's just a rep happening spontaneously, joyfully. Um, I don't even think about it. Just a rep, just another rep, just another rep. And then the session's done. It doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen. And what it does, it shows you, again, that underlying Tao of all things, the underlying pure existence, that deep quiet. Deep quiet exists even during a noisy 20 minute set of burpees. Um, when you hear me whooshing and hollering as I'm going along. Um, deep quiet is always present. When I can tap into that, and it doesn't happen purposely, it's always inadvertently, um, because it's just, again, it's a subsiding of the doer of burpees, the personality of burpees, all of that subsides, and it's just burpees being expressed, the Tao of burpees. Um, uh, Zen and the Art of Burpees. I've used all of those expressions and titles before. Um, and that's really it. Deep quiet, burpees, meditation, it's all things that happen, with deep quiet being the underlying foundation of it all. All right. That's all I have to say on that today. So <clears throat> I will start another session or another cycle Thursday for... Um, Navy SEALs. There's an outside chance I might talk myself into trying one more attempt at a higher number. Um, maybe trying for um, eight reps a minute or eight minutes at six reps a minute, which would be my all time best of doing um, six reps a minute. If I only did that, um, that would be a big big plus. We'll see. All right, guys, take it easy. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.